These uh, little thermistor, these uh, uh, thermostat uh, modules keep popping up in eBay all the time, the listings. I notice they seem to be sold widely by the Chinese sellers for round about, typically £2, that's about three American dollars each, which is just criminal for what you're getting. It's, um, it's amazing. So the seller I got mine out from, uh, it was a little bit more expensive, but still nothing compared, you know, you just couldn't get the components for this. It was £2.63, it came from YMVON. And the only reason I bought it from them was I was buying some other stuff at the same time and just piled it in. As I did with more of the mushroom lights, but I really do have too many of them now. So um, it came with this little instruction guide, which is rather predictably in Chinese because it's really intended for the Chinese market. However, um, a bit of uh, sleuthing on the internet uh, found information uh, about setting all the different parameters in it. So let's uh, take a look at it electronically. The thermistor probe, it's not a thermocouple, it is actually a, th a resistive thermistor, plugs in here. It's got the digital readout for setting the parameters and, uh, and showing the actual temperature, a relay in the output. It's got the two input connections are labelled plus 12 volt and ground, which is pretty obvious. It's uh, the plus and the ground for the driving the control circuitry. And then there's two terminals marked KO and K1. And they appear to be just volt-free contacts connected directly onto the back of this relay. And they've put, um, they have made an effort to put little uh, clearance gaps to avoid um, tracking problems to between the, um, you know, whatever load you're switching and the low voltage circuitry. The relay is just rated at, it says 20 amps, 125 volts AC. I'm not actually convinced a relay of that size is going to handle 20 amps comfortably. And it also says if you're DC, uh, then it's rated for 20 amps at 14 volts DC. I, again, I wouldn't run it at that sort of current. Uh, I'd use it to switch other loads. Uh, in the, this case, maybe just a, um, a 24 volt contactor or a 12 volt contactor, or even a solid state relay. Um, however, the design of it, it, there are lots of nice little features. For instance, uh, the power going in has a polarity protection diode. Then it's got a little regulator, AMS11175, so that's a 5 volt regulator, it's a low dropout regulator. Given that it's a 12 volt supply, they don't really need a low dropout regulator, I guess they may just make, and, and the current of this is low as well, so I think they've just used this because it's small and it's very common, that's probably their only choice uh, reason for choosing that. It's got a microcontroller, which, uh, if I recall, let me see, let me remind myself the number. It's an SGS Thompson 8S003F3P6, which is a very common range of microcontrollers uh, with just the usual, it's, it's almost like PIC microcontrollers, it's their variation with uh, the usual sort of just... Uh, uh, simplified instruction set and uh, just loads of different assignable functions. There's an LED up here next to the displays. I don't know if it's multiplexed in the same circuit, but it uh, likes to show when the relay is on. There's a little transistor down here to switch the relay and a protection reverse EMF protection diode here across the relay contacts, the, the relay, not the relay contacts, the relay coil too. So that's about it. It's, it's quite nice. It's quite a robust little unit. So let's um, plug it in and we'll try it out. Now this will look a bit flickery. It doesn't look flickery to me because um, it's this that a multiplex display and they always look a bit flickery. So turning it on and it's displaying the current temperature which in this case is 18.7 degrees centigrade. Now, here's what I managed to deduce from the uh, what I found in various sources on the internet about the settings. When you press, you've got a plus button and a minus button for adjusting values up and down, and you've got a set button. If you press the set button, it starts flashing the set temperature. So at the moment it's 28 degrees centigrade. Uh, let's uh, bring that down to about 21 degrees centigrade. It does have that function that if you uh, hold the button in, it will start uh, going a bit faster. But you can also uh, nudge it by one step at a time in tenth of a degree centigrade uh, steps. So that's 22 degrees centigrade. And uh, 
The other thing you can do is, uh, at the moment it's in what's called cooling mode. So as soon as I heat this probe up to the point it actually goes above about the 20. I think there's a 2 degree hysteresis at the moment. Yes there is, 2 degree hysteresis. I'll show you a bit more about that later. But that would bring on a cooling fan and as soon as it goes back down to the intended temperature it will cut off. The hysteresis is the difference between the on and off temperature because if you had it down to like a tenth of a degree accurately then there's a possibility that it would just like stray signals being picked up by the this probe or just rapid temperature fluctuations you could end up with the contactor or whatever it was controlling a heater or fan cycling on and off continually which isn't good so what they do you can program a, a slight temperature differential that say for instance it was set for about I think it was 22 did I have it set for there it didn't come on till 24 and then it would go back off as soon as it reached the 20 oh no it was set for 20 and it came on at 22 and it will go off back off at 20 so it's, it's going to take a while to come back down the, it is a thermistor based uh, probe so it tends to have a slightly slower reaction time than a, um, a, ther a thermocouple however you can change the mode at the moment it's in cooling mode so if it gets too hot it turns on a fan if you press and hold the set button for more than about 5 seconds 2, 3, 4, 5 it goes into programming mode and PO is the first thing if I press that now it will display cold and if I for C for cold and if I press the toggle button it will just toggle between heat and cool so if I put it to heat now um, then it will actually it will turn the it will turn the load on until the heat the temperature is actually reached it will be the complete opposite of the cooling one so at the moment it's uh, seeing that it's quite cool it's wanting to heat up and as I heat it up once it reaches the temperature, about 22, or as I have a set at 24. Ah, there, there we go. Uh, and then it cuts off. The next thing is the, the next mode it can program is the P1, which is hysteresis, which is that thing that sort of... Uh, so if I go to uh, P1 and select, at the moment it's 2 degrees centigrade, you can change that, you can change it to anything from about 0.1 to 15 degrees centigrade depending on your application. The next thing uh, you can change, P2, is the highest temperature it will read. If, now that doesn't seem to make much sense because it, you know, it, it can read up to about 110 degrees centigrade, it can read down to minus 50. But if you set a higher temperature, when it reaches that, say you didn't want it to go anywhere near 100 degrees centigrade, if you set the 100 degrees centigrade, then when it reaches that temperature, it'll actually start flashing the display. It'll warn that it's too hot. Uh, likewise, if you set the lowest temperature, which is P3, then when it reaches that threshold, if it's getting too cold, it'll start flashing the display as a warning again to get your attention. P4 is really nice. It's probe correction. And there's going to be some variation between the resistance and probe's tolerance. What that lets you do it lets you calibrate the probe and that's really quite something for uh, something as cheap and simple as this that you can literally calibrate it down I think I think it goes down to uh, a resolution of a tenth of a degree you can calibrate it to so let's uh, take a look at that so let's go to 4 which is the probe correction yep it lets you calibrate that uh, plus or minus 7 degrees and tenth of a degree steps the next function, P5, uh, oop, is a delay of 0 to 10 minutes. At the moment it's set to 0, which means it reacts instantly. But if you set a time delay, this could be handy if, for instance, you had a motor that couldn't be cycled, you know, you had to leave it to cool down for about 5 minutes before running it again. You could set a 5 minute delay so that there was no chance at all, even if the temperature was fluctuating wildly, that the motor or, or whatever it was could be cycled on and off too often. And then there's P6. P6, all I could find about this was ketone. And I don't know if this also can drive beepers or something like that. I haven't a clue what ketone is, but it lets you choose 0 to 110. And I played about with that setting and I bricked the controller. Completely bricked it. Let me show you how to brick these controllers. 
So I'm putting it into the programming mode. I'm going to uh, go to P6. Um, I'm going to set it on. And then it's currently set to 110. I haven't a clue what this, this parameter is. I'm going to run it all the way down to zero. And it's obviously didn't think about this happening in software. Because if you run it all the way down to zero, and then you leave it, I'll bring this up so you can see it, so you can see it bricking. Oh, is it not going to break this time? Oh, it didn't brick this time. I'm disappointed. I haven't managed to brick it this time. I'll have another go at bricking it. So, uh, P6 is at zero. Oh yeah, that's just crashed now. And if I turn this off, oh there it goes. It's gubbed. And if you turn it off and on now, that's all it does. It displays those three dashes. And it does not respond to anything. And initially I found out if I turned it off and on again, and I held set, it would start displaying the flashing and I could adjust the param oh, there it goes, as soon as you touch a button it just locks out again and I thought, oh that's not very good, I've completely bricked it so here's how you unbrick it and I couldn't find any information about this online, I had to work it out myself I tend to build things into my software that if there are various settings available in something uh, I, I put a factory default thing in that if, as soon as it's powered up if you hold a couple of buttons down and turn the power on, um, it will revert to def its default. So if you hold plus and minus down together in this, and you turn it off, turn it on, it displays all eights, and that's it back. That's it unbricked. It's reset all the defaults. But um, I would say, I don't know what ketone is, the P6 function. I don't know if it's for a completely different uh, module, but uh, it's causes, well, if you set it to zero, maybe if you set it to other values, I'm not really sure, but certainly zero was reliable in doing it for me, it crashes it and bricks it completely. So if you've got one of these and you've bricked it, then that's how you, you unbrick it. Just hold down plus and minus and then power it up and it will reset it completely. But other than that, you know, this is quite a useful little module. I can think of lots of uh, interesting uses for this. Um, it really is quite neat. But yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely quite a fun toy.